Hello, future subscribers. My name is Brendan Wakeley. You can find me at A. Maxwell Snow on Twitter. And this is... What are you... I'm uh, Liam, and I'm caressing my beautiful face. Oh. <laughs> oh. I'm just feeling all the, like, pimples and just, like, disgusting mm. zittiness of my face. Oh, is that oh. some acne I feel? Oh. <laughs> Oh, Delicious. I oh. You've probably already seen me as being the handsomest man in the entire group. Oh, yeah. Yep. You'll soon see me male modeling in the future. Screw Nick. Wow, Brandon has just made his feelings heard. <laughs> he, <laughs> he finds Nick to be an attractive man. He's probably the most attractive, well, maybe, yeah, probably the most. He's the skinniest person in the group. We'll say that much. I hope his girlfriend is listening. <laughs> Uh, anyways, <laughs> this time on the Drury Pod, we're going to be talking about a favorite topic of many a podcast. I'm sure it's never gone unnoticed uh, by any podcast I've heard of, and that would be serial killing, serial killers, and abnormal psychology. This would be one of my favorite topics as a uh, as a an aspiring uh, psychology student. Subscribe to Ashens, by the way. He's Plug. A, he's a he's, Plug. yeah yeah right there. Plugging Ashens. Yeah. Uh, he's a very good. Uh, he's a YouTuber who basically reviews cheap tat like things. He goes he goes to a dollar store and buys things, and mm. gets them sent to him. He also eats horrible food that I don't know. Yes, so oh uh, yeah the subscriber special the shoe the shoe sh nigger off uh cookie was the, the anyways as a. Uh, as a psychologist, I've always been fascinated. That's right, I'm a full-on psychologist now. I've graduated. <laughs> you need a Here PhD. You go. Here's your degree. In Ontario, <laughs> you need a PhD. <laughs> oh, so I'm in Quebec now. Uh, <laughs> but in Ontario or Quebec, you need a PhD to be a psychologist. So yeah, I've always been fascinated with the idea of this ab the abnormal psychology behind serial killers and what's cre and what creates them. So let's start with um. Uh, your friend and mine, one of the more well-known uh, serial killers. We'll probably move into some more Canadian topics later, but let's talk about uh, uh, yeah, our good friend Jeffrey Dahmer. Oh, oh, wait, uh, uh, hold on, failing to remember, not good with names. Describe him. Don't want to make myself a clean idiot. Um, physically imposing yet nerdy-looking guy who. Uh, I had a whole bunch of gay sex and bored holes into people's skulls and poured acid in it. Oh! I have... Yeah! Yeah. So we're remembering Jeffrey Dahmer yeah. now? Would you have preferred Ted Bundy or Ed Gain? Ed Gain wasn't a serial killer, but... No, I don't uh, know names, Liam. You should know this by now. Names okay. are not my strong suit. So let's give a, a little overview. Um, I've, I've read a little bit into, Je quite a bit into Jeffrey Dahmer, actually. Very interesting case of this guy who grew up, um, supposedly, like, they, they said it was a stereotypically good American family, but then we later found out his family was full of problems, had, uh, two parents that weren't necessarily bad, but that didn't really get along, supposedly, and, uh, uh, whatever the causes happened to be, Dahmer's uh, crime spree was like extremely well known back in the time that it happened. Um, like I can imagine that it's hard. People to saw it coming. That was the fun. That was the not fun. That was the funny part. People should have seen. Yes, the fun part. Ooh, we put the. Liam's a serial killer. Uh, he just checked the dumpsters. We put the fun and unfun to side. Infanticide, mm -hmm. rather. <laughs> yes. Um, so, sure. yeah. D Dahmer was some sort of, had this, uh, like, it was, it, people should have seen it coming. And, uh, you know, I've read books on this topic, and basically all the authors agree, yeah, why didn't they see it coming? He was a very creepy individual in school. Um, one specific instance has him, like, pulling a fish out from one of his friend's pawns and gutting it right in front of him that is the <laughs> best thing to do after his friend told him to put it back in of course oh okay so that's still horrible. best thing to do supposedly dissolving animals in acid to see what they look like oh um well uh that that's yeah that's generally one of the first signs of your serial killer when you start hurting tiny animals yeah fantasized about sleeping with uh dead men you know 
Necrophilia, that's pretty good. Yeah, so the thing with uh, Dahmer's incredibly, incredibly messed up individual, uh, like in uh, like in, in all reality, but uh, like it, it, just looking at the psychology behind it is uh, he's it, it, in my opinion he's like this really stereotypical case. Yeah. It's just he had a bad upbringing and he ended up like Doing, being messed up. Yeah. He couldn't deal with his own homosexuality because no one was going to let him come out. Well, of course, uh, this what, what, what this was in uh this was before that would be normal and you would that be pretty much institutionalizing. Yeah, basically that uh, homosexuality was still viewed as a mental illness when he was in high school. So of course he couldn't come out with that, which only led to you know this this mental anguish. And his first murder was separate from the rest of them. Like he did it, and then there was a really long hiatus. And you know he went to university, failed there. I think he joined the military for a while or something like that. Yeah, he tried to, at least. Well, I think he was in the military for a while. Um, it's just it, talking about the psychology behind it, because I know we're not both on the same level yeah, with of, the, of knowledge with these yeah. topics. Um, but yeah, he just... Uh, the, he, he had problems, uh, intrinsic problems, I think. Yeah, I. It's he doesn't sound... Because some serial killers, the their motives behind it is that they're trying to get... Um, they're trying to get more in life. They're trying to get something better for whatever they have. Yeah, and this mm. guy doesn't seem... That's not what he's doing, why he murdered. That's not at all the same reason. Dahmer supposedly murdered because he didn't want the people that he slept with to leave him, I guess. Well, that's that's definitely one way to do that. And um, that, that that's freaking terrifying. Uh, and then also he, you know experimented with trying to create zombies it's really fucked up stuff like if you I, if you've I, ever heard of this case I you have know to he's read about up. him oh my that he's, sounds great he's a sickly fascinating character and the the thing is you hear his backstory and you you do sympathize with Dahmer to an extent yeah you realize that this was entirely preventable mm -hmm. and that he could have gotten help had his town had the people in his town just cared more and had people just done something, but, you know... And he, if people maybe picked up on the warning signs, but I don't think the level of psychology we have now for knowing that kind of thing is was around yet, um... And I know a lot of people say, uh, a lot of people say, well, we can't, we can't forgive him for what he did, and I'd say that's true. I'd say you really can't, I don't expect that of human psychology, but, um, additionally, I think that we can't say, oh, well, he should have, uh, ended his own life immediately after you know, killing one person. He could have killed himself at any time. I don't think we can do that. People don't seem to under, like, well, I don't know, but people don't often understand what, how powerful the, the will to live is. And for him, killing people was not the, as atrocious as it is for us. Once you've killed a couple of people, you, you, it, you, you get normalized to it. It's what the military did. And if he was in the military, he would definitely be mil uh, normalized to it. Well, and ad additionally with Dahmer, you need to remember his psychology was different from the very beginning. He had no, he generally was known to enjoy some people's suffering sometimes, and he really didn't care as much for people, though he knew what he was doing was morally wrong. So his moral compass, uh, his moral compass wasn't actually that bad, but his idea of what good and bad were, I suppose, was messed up, but he knew what society expected of him. Yeah, it's, I just want to go back to the point where he was pouring people, acid into people's heads as an attempt to create zombies. Mm -hmm. what, this, this, did he just have, like, a weird fascination with trying to use acid to do things like that? Uh, yes, very much so. He really liked to look at what the effect of acid, uh, was on people, and, 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 like, again, with Dahmer, you need to... This this guy was sick. He was sick, but in no way, at least before the murder started, was he unsalvageable as no. a as a human being. He no. could have been treated. Um, and, of course, he ended up eventually dying in uh, prison after he was beaten to death by a schizophrenic uh, man. Another was, prisoner. Was he institutionalized after, or was it just, like, a normal prison? I oh, just a, just a normal, like, high-security prison kind of thing, like... Okay, they, they, I I guess that's where they put... I didn't know that that's where they would have put people that like, probably... Would well, he was in there with a clan member, and I don't think clan members go to institutions. I think they just get put in jail. So, no, that's a, that's kind of telling of the uh, of the U.S. system. But, of course, by that point, what what else would you have wanted for Dahmer except a lethal injection? Mm. Um, people, again, I can understand that, but 
it's it's always terrible when you see these people not necessarily created by society but society didn't help uh, no, them and no. it and didn't help get rid of the problem uh, regardless of the individual the problem with lethal injection is is that the idea of public like execution like that was that it was to put fear into people who were going to who would have committed crimes in ancient times and that's where that idea comes from if we kill them we get rid of them and we make a public uh, statement that doesn't really help these uh, today. That could yeah. actually just cause even more problems. With Let the kid play with the head afterwards. Yeah, you know, it's just, okay. Just, it's you know. good stuff. Just mm. let... We'll, we'll have a lottery. Let them draw... Like, whoever gets a dot, we'll just stone. We'll just kill them. There's not enough crime going on. Oh, uh, just kill them. Make oh. an example. But yeah, I get what you mean. Like, especially in the case of serial killers. Serial killers aren't going to be like... Uh, Freaked out by it. No, they're not, most of them aren't even afraid of death. It's just publicity that uh, mm -hmm. a lot of them want. It's not a thing that is really helpful with people like this. The other interesting thing with him is that, like, you, when you were pu pulling out fish and trying to boil, uh, put things into acid to see what happens, there has become, there's certainly something wrong with you. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've, I've no, like, one of our chemistry teachers would take fish and, I think he would take fish and put, uh, no, sodium into them. Not, like, fake, like, normal salt, sodium, the element that reacts with water in front of the back of the lake. But I could be wrong about that. Oh. Yeah. Fast, he's a good, he's still a good teacher. Oh, uh, I... No, I don't, I don't know, but I I know he uh, he threw like blocks of sodium yeah, into I know. water before. I can't remember if he did anything with them, but yes, we're not gonna go nope. into into that. No, nope. but um, yeah, so that's that's Dahmer for you. And one of the more tragic cases, as I said, because it's not as though there was he that he was beyond helping, uh, early on at least. Um, now there is a very enigmatic one, uh, one serial killer that I'd like to talk about, who was. But I wouldn't, like, I don't know if he was, like, what, because no one really knows too much about his early life. That would be Albert Fish. It, you That's a great name. That's a really nice name. Ah, for probably the most sadistic killer in American history. Uh, responsible for uh, at least over a dozen deaths, as I recall. Remember, we do this with very little research. I didn't research this at all and have barely any background knowledge. Yeah, but uh, Fish was, like, incredibly depraved. I don't even know if I should, like, discuss his crimes. Discuss his here. crimes. Okay. Um, the murder he is most well known for is when he lured a very small girl, I think she was, like, eight years old, okay, over that's... to his house. Okay, so we're probably a pedophile, maybe. Um, he uh, brought her up, he got her to come upstairs into a room where he was, like, already naked. Because he didn't want blood on his clothes, I guess. Okay. And he strangled her to death. This little girl strangled her. I don't see to death. why you need to take off your clothes to not get blood on you when you're just strangling a person. Yeah, it was a he, he was a fucked up person. Um, so he uh he strangled this little girl to death, and then he ate her. I'm enjoying this man's motives. Whatever his he must have just been a very hungry homeless man. He ha he owned a house. I, I don't know what his motives are, but. To achieve Ugh. that, there must have been something there so that in was his childhood. Most of his victims were supposedly men, like younger men, but uh, that specifically is probably the most heinous crime he was well known for. And then he sent a, a message to the mother about like how he killed this girl, and like, gave this backstory about how, I don't know, somewhere in Asia people were eating human flesh. And I'm pretty sure he plagiarized that shit from Jonathan Swift. Like, from A Modest Proposal. I think I was stating this earlier. He he literally <laughs> plagiarized Jonathan Swift in sending a letter to this family. Like, I my my American friend tells me of a country where they eat human flesh and sell it for cheap. I'm like, yeah, yeah, Albert fucking Fish. You just plagiarized fucking Jonathan Swift Maybe you in your explain. message to a mother. Maybe you should explain what A Modest Proposal is. A Modest Proposal is a satirical essay written by Jonathan Swift in 1729 that is that kind of um what do you call um is I believe it proposed we would end homelessness and poverty by eating the only uh, in Ireland yes only, only in, in Ireland. Ireland you would uh yeah in Ireland that we would end poverty by getting like 
the babe getting babies from poor people, selling them to the rich as food. Now that's basically what Amar's proposal is. You have to know, of course, that Swift didn't actually mean that, and he was just criticizing the landlords. So I yeah, like I'll... some articles I've read where people thought it was serious. No, dumbasses. No. <laughs> but yeah, Albert Fish plagiarized from Jonathan Swift, which was just one of the more minor of his crimes. Ooh, plagiarism. He would have just failed his uh, S English uh, English courses in university. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so basically, um, uh, Fish was, like, incredibly depraved. Supposedly, uh, he was into every form of, uh, of just perver uh, perverted fetish known to man, and several that weren't known before. He, he stuck roses up his urethra. <laughs> Rose stems up his urethra, everyone. <laughs> oh, my legs, please. That's too tight. That's too horrible. Yep. Oh, yep, he did. He stuck rose stems up his urethra. Because he was very... He, like, a, a lot of people say he used to do it as, like, penance for his, like, crimes, but... Fuck, man. Um, he was, he was turned on by shit, apparently, as well. Uh, he used to, like, stab pins into his pelvis. Okay. Scrotum, even. Ow. <laughs> really, really fucked up individual. And we know nothing about his past, so I think that this could be entirely unjustified by his uh, upbringing for I, whatever the hell Albert Fish was. I, I, I honestly think this may have to... I don't know what could spawn this. Either he was... At, he's the first person to actually be possessed, or there was definitely something in his childhood that was really horrible. Yeah, like, I, I guess he might have had, like, an abusive, at least an abusive child. Like, he was a big, he's a Bible thumper, too, which was the worst part. Like, how can you love God that much and still go around fucking murdering people and eating them? And then shoving roses up your urethra. Your okay, so no. when they finally no. caught Albert Fish, they finally caught him when his lawyer released, like, his last statement before he was to be executed, the lawyer said he couldn't read it, and then I'm pretty sure he burned it. Three pages, he said it was the most disgusting thing he had ever read, and he kept that, the secret of what it said, basically to the grave. What were his other crimes? Oh, I'm fairly sure necrophilia is definitely on that. Yep, quite a lot of murders, cannibalism, cannibalism's a crime, desecration of a corpse, which is related to cannibalism, uh, ob like, yeah, just insanely fucked up person, no idea how he got that way, He's very enigmatic as far as serial killers go, just because he seemed to be he seemed to be evil incarnate, and even today it's hard to look That's, for reasoning behind his crimes. Just, I mean, I you lure an eight-year-old child and eat it. Thankfully, the mother was illiterate, apparently, so she couldn't read the note, <laughs> is, uh, is what I've been told. Thankfully, she was illiterate. Thankfully, what? the American education system of the time was so terrible. It saved that mother a horrible, horrible plagiarism letter. Yeah. I can just imagine if she was really illiterate, she's like... Even though she's she should be grieving, because like oh. that, that would be a terrible thing to happen anyway. She's just like... He plagiarized Jonathan Swift. Ugh. Puts it on the table, like, just rips it in half, throws it away. I'm not even affected by this. I'm I'm so offended by... I don't even care my daughter's been eaten. Yeah, see, that would be, like, the worst mother in, uh, ever, oh. but no. no. I'll just go make another child. Oh. <laughs> yes, surely plagiarizing Jonathan Swift would be the worst possible thing. Yeah, so we're, we're trivia trivializing serial murder, aren't we? Yes, you have... Do, is, there, is there a problem with this? Oh, I, I don't know, except, you know, we'll get flagged. Uh, so, since <laughs> we already are in the horrible, weird fetish section, are we counting things like bestiality right here? Um, yeah, that, that'll count as abnormal uh, psychology. Anything to give you something to talk about, because nope, I know no, so much about the No, I'm saying with uh, fish. Oh. With that one of them. Oh, yeah. Okay. Fish was into bestiality. Yeah, okay, that motherfucker. Okay, that last name's making more sense. Fish. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, yeah, he, he kind of looked pretty damn ugly. I would almost ask for a picture, but we know this is going to stop the recording. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that okay. was... Uh, that's... That, that's Albert Fish for you. Now, he's, he fits into a different category of murderer, which I call the ones that you can't really even classify what made them so fucked up. 
Um, I, I, there has to be a good reason in his past. But... There has to be, but we don't we don't know. No one cares because he was kind of a monster. Um, now let's think of uh, I don't know who's who. What's one that you would know of? Do you know of any specific serial killers? Well, not really. Can't do names. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Not going to do school shootings because that's touchy. Um, and that's mass murder. That's not serial killing. Then, yes, we're keep not taking mass murder. Different, totally, completely different ooh, criteria. Ooh, everyone. Uh, uh, Chicago Expo. I want to say um, the one house, the murder house. Oh, the murder house, like the one where all those people got killed. Yes, and incinerated. It was very well. H H Holmes, right? Yes, H H Holmes. Doctor Death. Uh, Possibly the most. One of my favorite serial killers, just because of how well done he is and how well educated in this he was. Most proli- one of the most prolific of all American serial killers, Dr. H. H. Holmes, had like his murder mansion. And what he would do is, not only would he lure people in to kill them in a whole bunch of brutal ways, which included, I think he even used acid as well. Um, uh, yeah, acid, but mostly gassing them and then incinerating them. Oh yeah, gassing people. Well, yeah, yeah. So that that's something that he that Holmes used to do. And what Holmes would do as well is he would take out these people's like life insurance policies mm-hmm. as well. He would like pose as them and then uh take out these like policies and things like that. It was a bit weird. And of course, he'd steal their possessions, which is impressive. He was actually a very well educated. Like it started with cadavers. Yeah. Um, and then, because he was a medical student, then he eventually went on to build this house, which was very fascinating on how the house was built. He would hire a building contract, like a building company, and after doing a certain amount, he would say, you're fired, and get another one. So everyone mm-hmm. was very confused, and the house was set up weird, so you wouldn't be able to escape it. Mm-hmm. And in that way, he would be able to trap people and then gas them into ro- in rooms, and it would be the most... It would probably be a very horrible thing to get. Yeah, H.H. H. Holmes is very interesting in just how well he got away with what he did. Yeah, he uh, got so many people, too. And it's impressive also Literally because... far into the double digits, but they say even into the triple digits mm-hmm. yeah, he might have killed. Because he had it so well systemized and so well thought out. He would only uh, target single women because, obviously, for some re- at that time, their parents wouldn't be looking for them. Mm-hmm. And so there would be no one to check after them. Yeah, and like... And so no one would... And then take out life insurance policies on them, yes. He faked his own death, too, and took out insurance policy. Yeah. Which is... I don't even know how to express that. That's very well done. That's... You have a certain level of intelligence. Once you Actually, I wonder how you that. fake... So, how you take someone else's life insurance. You just, like, go up like, you hey... Kill, you kill someone else, claim their body to be yours. Mm-hmm. I believe he used his friend's body. Yeah, right. So, yeah, there was a few guys that he would have tried that with. But still, yeah, H.H. H. Holmes extremely devious. They did eventually catch him. It was also very hard so. to catch him because he would incinerate the bodies after. Mm-hmm. And so there was no evidence. Yeah. So, just very interesting, calculating killer. But his downfall was that, a, like a lot of other killers... He was a homebody to the extent that he liked to do his killings in one specific area. Mm-hmm. Whereas um, if you're moving around constantly, it's much harder to catch you. Yeah. The other interesting thing with him like that was when he did start moving, it was much easier to catch him because mm-hmm. he didn't have the building set up. Yeah, well, yes, cause he did move around. He even moved into Canada for mm-hmm. a little bit. Right. So, yeah, it's not even like... um. That, but there have been plenty of killers that have been caught because they refused to leave their mm-hmm. domicile. Uh, like, what, like, um, I'm trying to think. There was one British killer that got caught that way. Uh, I almost... Basically. Uh, th- and he falls into the serial killers that have the psychology of, I'm gonna, I have to kill people so I can make it better for my future and for the people I like future. Yeah, he was, uh, he largely, uh, really liked to get money from people, but he, the reason why he's a serial killer is because he did also get immense enjoyment from it. It's not even like a hitman who just kills for money. He killed for both pleasure and the monetary benefits, which is a very interesting category. That's why, uh, even though he had enough money to basically live on forever, he had a fortune, he still kept killing. He didn't just kill till he had enough. 
he had to keep killing, and it was, it was, of course, he figured this out when it started with, uh, the cadavers. Mm hmm Which, if, I guess, some people might not know, those are be- dead bodies they, uh, supplied medical students. Yeah, started yeah. with these cadavers. Uh, very, grave robbing was very common back mm-hmm. in those days. Uh, so, and a, back then, schools did not ask where you got bodies from, too. Um, there were quite a few, there were a few murderers who sold the cadavers of their victims. Actually, I think uh, he did yeah. that, too. He was one of those people who would buy, like, get them from the university and sell them to the university all at the same time. Yeah, yeah, so basically, um, that was a lucrative business. You could go around murdering people, and then, like, cause especially since grave digging in, in England had been very common, at least to make money. So it's like when the bodies start, uh drying up so to speak in the areas or you know they up the security in cemeteries what are you going to do well you're going to murder someone uh and uh you know use their corpse so not the university this but but uh dahmer is not sorry holmes is not nearly as horrible as like like in his methodology as uh dahmer or fish oh dahmer especially with dahmer keeping uh i forgot to mention dahmer kept uh uh prizes basically Kept parts of the body, kept skulls and things like that. Kept yeah. heads in fridges. Stuff like that. That's another weird uh, aspect of Dahmer. Sounds like early versions of Thames. Oh, God, no. Why is Thames Jeffrey Dahmer? <laughs> now I'm just imagining, like... <laughs> Thames, like, no officer, please. He's just my boyfriend. Ooh. Ugh. Mm. Anyways, yeah, so that's that. That's H.H. H. Holmes, one of the most prolific. And if we're talking about prolific American serial killers, number one is probably H.H. H. Holmes, unless it is Henry Lee Lucas. And the only reason I bring up Henry Lee Lucas is because he claimed to do, like, 500 murders, even though it's probably pretty obvious that he didn't actually commit that many. Who? Can you just, like... Uh, Henry Lee France? Lucas was, like, this incredibly depraved killer... Um, as I recall, it was him and this guy called Otis Toole that just kind of went around America killing people. And the reason why, I think it was Otis Toole, not Henry Lee Lucas, the reason why Otis Toole has a claim to fame is he is the person that killed John Walsh's son. The guy who, uh, hosted America's Most Wanted. Interesting. That's, okay. Wow, that's a crime you can take a name to, actually. That's yeah. pretty important. So that is Henry Lee Lucas and Otis Toole. I think Henry Lee Lucas played the whole I've reformed thing, but then while he was saying that he reformed, he started boasting about him doing these killings. Mm-hmm. They're not really the most interesting. These guys are your classic psychopaths. He did it because why not? I'm not sure whether it was Lucas or uh, Tool that was into cannibalism. Uh, one of them was. Um, but still, yeah, those were they're, they're your they're they're your quintessential psychopath like. They're- they're not that, they're, they're like, they're probably following the same, we're doing this for money, not really for pleasure, kind of psychopath. Oh, they definitely, they definitely, are. they definitely did do it for pleasure, I mean, because they're fucked up, serial killers generally kill for pleasure, it's a sexual thing for them, a lot oh, of them, yeah. a lot of them yeah. don't get off yeah. even, like, on, yeah. on sex, yeah. that murder is like their sex, it's a, it's a bit terrible. And the but like I said, not as in, not as interesting a case though, no. except for like the big boast, because there's more interesting cases like Charles Manson, who was just disgustingly abused as a child. <sighs> Charles Manson, there I I want to point this out because someone out there saying, why have you brought up Bonnie and Clyde? Because uh, they weren't not, serial no, killers. They're not serial killers. They killed a lot of people. They're not serial killers. They were criminals. They did it for money. They, they did it for money and because they actually got a whole lot of fame and a lot of people actually <laughs> liked them for doing it for some reason. They did they did not derive pleasure from just straight up murdering people. No, no. Bonnie and Clyde are different. Yeah, what's odd about uh what's odd about Manson is he had like this terrible childhood. He was abused by his alcoholic uncle, I believe. Yes. And then well, his father probably wasn't that good either. And then like um I think maybe it was his mother or his aunt made him dress up mm-hmm. or maybe it was his uncle again, made him dress up in a dress and go to school that way. And it was and it's terrible. And this guy's still alive, right, man? Yeah. Um yeah. yeah, he is, he is. Someone I tried to propose marriage to him, I think. Yes, yeah, yeah, Manson recently. was fucked up. And additionally, Manson is interesting because none of his murders were committed by him. Nope. He had a league of women to do that for him. Yep. The 70s were... 70s? 60s? 60s, 60s. I think. He was a hippie. The 60s were great. You should subscribe to the 60s. Yeah, so... 
Um, first off, to like with every sing to every single Manson cultist out there, what the fuck? <laughs> Some of you are out of prison right now. Some of you weren't even charged. Seriously, the fuck. Drugs, Liam. It was the sixties. I know, it was but the drugs. I know, I know, but seriously though, just the fuck. Answer was, me that. It was a Answer cultural me that. thing too. I know. It's like they became murder hippies. He had this entire idea of that he took from a Beatles album. That there was going to be Helter Skelter, and that Helter Skelter referred to the blacks will rise up and kill all the whites. Except Manson said to himself, not me, I'm going to be their fucking emperor. And I, I like this Manson. He knows what he's doing. And here is Manson. Uh, interesting, because he's a charismatic figure. And you might think, oh, he just liked murder. And, no, no, he was very good. And that's why he manipulated. Mm -hmm. That's why he manipulated people to do this. No, Manson probably fucking believed exactly what he was thinking. I'm pretty sure he was not just a psychopath, but he was also psychotic, meaning that he had delusions. And I think he definitely had delusions of grandeur, mm -hmm. believing he was going to be the emperor of the African race or whatever, which, by the way, is incredibly fucking offensive, Charles Manson. God, just... if you're watching this from prison, first of all, totally cool that they have YouTube in prison. Second of all, I don't know why they have YouTube in prison. <laughs> Yeah, so freaking, uh, yeah, freaking uh, Charles Manson was a very interesting case. Just this cult of personality mm -hmm. showing you how people can control other people and get them to do what they want. It's like a, it's a bit like what Jonestown with that cult. You said some of the most of the people couldn't get like pressure from sex. This guy was completely different. He was the charismatic guy that. Would. That's why yeah. I think he was psychotic, because a lot of times psychopaths derive pleasure from harming other people and from killing other people, whereas he, I believe he was a goal-driven serial killer. He probably legitimately believed that what he was doing was going to cause this event that he wanted to happen. That's why he targeted such specific members of society. Mm-hmm. Like um, Roman it's... Polanski, specifically <laughs> trying to kill Roman Polanski. Oh, Yeah. That, and that didn't go so well for him, if I remember right. No, Roman Polanski wasn't there, but he did kill his wife and several other house guests. His wife was pregnant, too, at the time. Oh, yeah. Which, I mean, okay, you're a serial killer, doesn't matter to you. Yeah, it's, it's, it's freaking reprehensible stuff, I know. Um, I, if we're gonna, like, psychotic killers are an entirely other vein. If we're gonna go into psychotic killers... Number one is Charles Manson in terms of uh, how being well-known. Second is probably Ed Gain, despite the fact he only killed, like, one or two people. Um, but his depravity is what inspired the Texas Chainsaw Massacre and Psycho. That's... Can you tell me what he did? Because that's pretty impressive to have two movies based off of you. Ed Gain was known as the Plainfield Ghoul. He, common, he had an overly domineering mother... Okay. who controlled every aspect of his life and was a Bible thumper. So that's where a, the, the psycho part comes from. Yes, and taught him to hate women, basically, including herself. She didn't. She hated herself as well. Okay, um, uh, this is why uh, modern TV is bad. It says unrealistic for, uh, things, for, uh, images for girls, and then they become serial killers. If their sons into serial killers. Yep, so... Advertising spat kids. What, what Gain did is he would go to the local graveyard and dig up corpses. And female corpses. And what he would do... Oh, he's the one who would skin them and yep. wear their... Yeah. And he took yeah. body parts and he made lampshades out of them and he made cups out of he bones. He made suits out of them. He made a woman suit. Which, Which is, is exactly <laughs> as horrible as it sounds. <laughs> Just take that in, that he would wear a woman's skin around. Otherwise called a mammary vest. It's a for good... Some reason. It's the most... <laughs> it's like the most disgusting thing. That's why when he finally killed, like, I think two people by shooting them, uh, two women, because he couldn't get stuff out of the grave anymore, yeah, that's specifically why he did it, was to get their body parts. Yeah. He wanted to end up, he did want, I think his end goal was to end up, like, dressing like his mother, or trying to look like his mother. Which, I think he just wanted to become a woman. Like that. Yeah, a woman He was, woman like, the general. first transvestite. Yeah, he, he just wanted to do that, but it was, like, a really fucked up way of doing it. He smelled rotting flesh all the time, like, coming up from the ground. So he was, he was a complete uh, psychotic. He saw things that weren't there, and he hallucinated things. He wasn't a psychopath. He didn't enjoy 
killing people, but he had, like, these really weird visions and things like that of him needing to do things. The, the one, it's interesting, because when you take someone, skin them, and then say, I should have been a woman, I should be a woman, and then your mother's telling you, M women suck, it's an interesting way of going about your life. After your mother tells you, women suck, you should hate women, Ugh, I'm the mother. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and <then> Isaac. He... <laughs> Isaac grew up to be Ed Gain. Jesus Christ. No. Except the horribly mutated version of Ed Gain. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. No, so no, not Jesus. No, Ed Gain is not Jesus. Oh uh, no. Uh, so that's that's kind of funny. That uh, well, it's just kind of weird. Um. So yeah, that was Ed Gain, a, a psychotic, if there ever was one. But another, like, psychotic that actually killed more people was the Son of Sam, which was a really interesting... Just look just look the Son of Sam up, because I don't know if I want to go fully into detail. Man go fully believed, into detail. detail. Yeah, man believed that his neighbor's dog was telling him to go and kill people to do something. I, I think he needed to kill people for the dog demon that lived inside of the dog i think that was it what? or else the dog would like kill him or something well, like that well, this is what happens when you like in childhood you probably was attacked by dogs and that's where that springs from uh. delusions about dog attacks but of course he's psychotic so i believe that the problems were there probably from birth yeah. uh like uh schizophrenia and stuff like that and he was eventually caught, not even for, uh, not even for killing, I believe. Like the po the cops just uh, pulled him over. He's like, "Yep, I'm the son of Sam. Uh huh. I kill people with a 44 Magnum." And that's another thing that you need to know about serial killers. Um, you you sometimes can tell if someone is a psychotic or a psychopathic based on the weaponry they use. The son of Sam was psychotic. He used a 44 to kill people most of the time. A psychopathic serial killers prefer to use a knife. Um, because it is a more physical experience and obviously more phallic in nature. Uh, yeah, I can imagine how that works. Some people, the, oh, an exception, of course, being the Zodiac. Unless he was psychotic. The Zodiac might have been a psychotic. We don't know because we never caught him, but I'm pretty sure he was psychopathic because he liked to kill people. Wow, that's a horrible, horrible thing that he would, that a dog is, like, I know there's a, we have Simon... Simon, what are you doing? Simon, don't tell Brendan anything. Don't si tell him to do si things. Si si kill Liam? Okay, I'll kill Liam later. He has such soft fur today. I know. I haven't touched him today, so I don't know how I know. <laughs> Is he telling you this too, Brendan? <laughs> yeah. Are you conspiring against me? Unicron, you haven't told me anything about this. Hey, hey, no. Unicorn, why? You're going to get us flagged again. <laughs> no one knows. No. no one can see what's happening. People in Germany can't watch this video now. No, they won't. They'll just cry and say, what are you doing? And they won't know, because it's physical comedy, and there's no picture to go with the physical comedy. Oh, so in that case, it's fine. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so Son of Sam was a psychotic. So, just to give a, an overview of psychotic, psychotic want, uh, serial killers are generally goal-driven by a specific, like, need to do something, either by being told or through their, through their delusions. Psychopathic kill for fun and generally kill for pleasure, usually sexual pleasure. I do know that there is records on case of people saying Ouija boards told them to kill. Yeah, that would probably be a psychotic killer, like those... The, yeah. Even with the Slender Man stabbing, that would probably be psychotic. Oh, Slender Man stabbing? Something was seriously wrong with those people. Yes. One was very psychotic, the other was probably also psychotic, but just very impressionable. Yes. First of all, I want to talk about that quickly. When something, what was, what, what, what was going through their head at the time? Who said, yeah, it's a good idea, let's go kill people in the name of some pop culture. Some Do they even, like, legend. let's, let's take for, let's take for an example that Slenderman is real, as they probably believed, because mm -hmm. they were psychotic. 
Why would you want to be a fucking proxy for Slender Man? Do you know what the fuck a proxy is? I think they did if they were killing for him, Slender Man. Dumb motherfuckers! That's like that's that's dumb. That's just the dumbest bullshit. You can't get Slender Man on your side. I know I'm arguing from a, the the perspective that Slender Man is real, but that's just because it was their mindset. Uh, it's it's like you can't get Slender Man on your fucking side. Slender Man doesn't care about you. Slender Man. You seen Marble Hornets, motherfucker? Watch Marble Hornets. I'm petting Simon. None of you can see this. That's why I've been quiet for a while. Yeah. Simon's now looking at me like really. Really? Oh, I'll shat it. He just out shocking. Can you not shock me, Simon? Yes, so. Uh, um, and that's it, there is cases that people have been told by Ouija boards to kill, but a dog? I have never heard of dog um, yeah. murders before. Another guy was another guy just heard random ass voices that told him to murder people, or else an earthquake was going, like a super earthquake was going to happen. Which, for that, I can definitely understand, you know? If you heard you had to murder someone because there were super earthquakes, then, uh... That would make sense. You know, but if it was a person telling you that. I mean, this guy was just hearing random voices. Uh, maybe the voice of God, I guess? That might... Like, if you if you definitely... If you're a faithful believer in God and you hear a voice out of nowhere uh, telling you, yeah, there's gonna be a fucking earthquake if you don't kill people, then maybe you're more inclined to believe that, or you could believe it's the devil, but then in that case, you're, if you're psychotic, your mindset isn't really into that, well, now, is if, it? Well, if he was Christian, then, uh, that makes no sense, because even in the book of Sam, uh, was it Samson that it was, mm. that they, uh, his father went out to kill him, and then... Was, oh, that was Isaac. Oh, oh, that was, I yeah, Isaac, it was like, his father went out to kill him because God told him to kill his son. I should have done this because that's literally the plot of Binding of Isaac. Yeah. Um, and basically, at the last moment, God was like, No, you have proven to me enough. Stop. 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 Yeah, if you're a Christian and God tells you to kill someone, you know that God is testing you. He's mm -hmm. just waiting for you to say that you can't do it, and then he'll tell you that that was the right choice. Because God is not a complete dick. Unless you read the Old Testament, which in that case he is a monster that you should try to appease, because otherwise he's going to come in there and kick your ass. Mm -hmm. Then what other horrible? Maybe God's the worst serial killer. Think about that. God's kill. Uh, God's killed more people than anyone else. Yeah, I guess God's got more of the mass murderer feel to him. Yeah, though. really, because he kills. Uh, he's a serial mass murderer. That's very interesting. Yes. Mm, interesting. Mm. Yeah, so I know there's, like, tons of interesting serial killers we could talk about. Um, Ted Bundy and John Wayne Gacy are very... Well, okay, well, first off, note about John Wayne Gacy. No relation to John Wayne. I mean, like, first off, John Wayne, American film hero. John Wayne Gacy, fat uh, party clown who went around murdering small, small boys and young adults. So, basically, the inspiration for it? Yes. Okay. That's, um, That's exactly what he is, interestingly enough. There was actually, I saw in the news not, like, okay, was a while ago, maybe a year ago. I don't even remember. Time gets lost on me. Yay. That someone was going around in the costume from it in England, and it's like, okay, that's a smart idea. Just walk around in that costume. It's like, yeah, yeah how long did it take for him to get his ass whooped by someone? I don't even know. <laughs> I was wondering that myself. Britain, they don't take they don't take shit. Like to see him walk around in Glasgow, to get that to see how that slides. Uh, like for example, they headbutt clowns there. It's an initiation ritual. What? What? In in Scotland, in order to be a clown, you must have gotten headbutted Why? by the head clown in Why? order for you to. What? I... This is but this fits into my own fiction of what Scotland is. Look at Robbie Burns over there. Would Robbie Burns fucking lie to you? Look at his eyes. His eyes just say, clowns get headbutted in my country. <laughs> I know ferret legging's a thing, so it's believable. Ferret legging. Putting fer angry ferrets in your pants. Yes. Ferret legging. It's, which uh, is interesting. I don't think a serial killer has ever attempted that. They should attempt Serial killing while ferret legging. So let's move north of the border now to talk about our serial killers. Moon Dai Joe first, though. He was a serial killer. I can't remember what he did. All I know is that he was caught by, I believe, 
I believe one of the cops that caught him was uh, Batman. He really? Literally Batman. Like, the his name was Batman. Oh, okay. That is so fantastic. Yes, that's cool. Oh, also, the origin of the term going south. I'm assuming that in the U.S. they use the term going south, but to me, like, it it means when something is going wrong. But mm-hmm. to me, it just sounds like an insult towards the United States when we use it Screw here. Screw you, Texas. Ugh. Oh, things are going south oh. real fast. Then new, well, then some people over in, like, freaking uh, Delaware are just like, hey, fuck you. And we're like... Screw you! As we have a Nymo bars. No, no, Delaware. We were talking about further south. Oh, yeah, you hear that? Like they're like yelling all the way over to the state of Georgia. Georgia, fuck you! Then Georgia's like, they're yeah, talking about Mexico, asshole. I was about to say it's going to be Mexico next. Mexico looks at Brazil and they're like, "Br, you, 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 you," and that's where that ends. Oh no, I'm pretty sure like eventually it just gets to the Falklands and the Falklands are like, "Ah, oh, fuck you! We're part of Britain." And I've just started another comments war. Soon the Argentinians Mm. and the British will descend upon this comment section and all hell will break loose. (laughs) Yes, and the, and the, and Brendan, once he is crowned king of France, will, uh, stand there laughing. (laughs) And the French people will be like, what the fuck's he saying? (laughs) Is that supposed to be English? I don't think that's English. (laughs) <laughs> Anyways, back on topic. Uh, let's say uh, one of the more well-known, notorious uh, Canadian serial killers you might not have heard of was Willie Pickton. Very notorious murderer. For years and years, like decades, man, went completely unnoticed. Killed, like, dozens of prostitutes. Or he's even prostitutes. Maybe not even prostitutes, just women in general uh, as well. And he eventually got caught, but this guy... Completely brutal, but also extremely good at covering his tracks. Must have been. To get, was he one of the people that uh, was one of the ones that moved around a lot? Um, God, I'm not sure. I need to look up this case again. But he didn't overhunt, I guess, is one of the terms that they used to describe it. Uh, uh, he took people when he could, and it's just crazy. These people, he like, his targets generally had no connections. That must be why it took so long to catch him. Yeah, it's better when you don't hunt after the same people, like, people with relations to each other, because then you'll mm-hmm. get caught quicker. But easily the most notorious and uh, prolific serial killer in Canadian history. Uh, but let's see, the one that we think of, what's the one that we think of most uh, uh, with uh, Canada? So there was that recent stuff with that one military colonel. Uh, tr- I'm uh, what think. about the... Uh, Paul the... Bernardo is probably the most well-known recently, but what are you thinking of? I think there was the one guy... I don't think he was... I think he was just a murderer. Yeah, Luca Magnata? No, he was Norvern. He was like, I don't want to have to pay for things. I live in the bush. In the oh, world. yeah. And he was just a murderer. He's not a serial murderer. What are you talking about? No, um, uh, I was thinking of uh, Paul Bernardo, I believe, is the one where him and his, uh, I think it was his girlfriend, Carla Homolka, went on this fucking murder spree. And if you, if you know about Carla Homolka, that bitch is still out there. She's living in, like, the Caribbean or something. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, she's, like, living Ooh. in the freaking Caribbean, and she's perfectly fine. And I'm just thinking, what the fuck? She, like, th- she basically gave her younger sister up to... This guy, up to the serial killer, I can't even remember if it's Bernardo. Bernardo's probably the murderer. Unless it's, like, some politician that I'm pissed off at. But I'm pretty sure Bernardo's a murderer. Um, God damn it, that would be terrible if I just messed those names up. But I think it's Paul Bernardo. Jo- Anyways. Jo- Trudeau. Oh. Yeah, it's, uh, as we all, we all know Justin Trudeau, the most prolific serial killer in Canadian history. So, uh, he, he poured acid into people's heads after yeah, ra- while the, raping the, them. The, yeah. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Uh-huh. That certainly <laughs> happened, um, and... Yeah, no, John, we were talking about that Trudeau. Oh, yeah, Justin Trudeau. Trudeau. Uh, Justin Trudeau, prolific Canadian serial killer. He killed only Scots, um... There was an extreme when they were leaving a bank, yes. and, and with a crossbow, yes. unfortunately, yes. by legal. some old Canadian bylaw, it was entirely illegal. It was entirely legal. He got away with about twenty of them. Mm-hmm. It was very well done. Um, yeah, he was eventually um, uh, captured by the RCMP for jaywalking. It was very and uh, um, welcome to Canadian law. We're very strict, but we're kind about it. He was uh, in prison for three days, and 
that's definitely the first time we're talking about is this we're, we're capable of being sued for libel for this we're not actually talk we're not actually saying this is not serious just we're Trudeau's not actually politician. saying that justin trudeau uh a leader of the liberal party we are not saying he is actually a serial murderer who was arrested for no, jaywalking no, no. He was actually, he... we are merely saying that he was a serial killer yes. the jaywalking claim was made up yes completely <laughs> Uh, so yes, that's it. Anyways, yeah, uh, Carla Molka, terrible person, just terrible, straight up, and got away with it, got away with it perfectly free. Unlike Guise de Ray, who was totally that was bullshit. That man should never have been convicted for murdering those children that he done did. Did he actually kill them though? No, no, he didn't. That was just some rich, a rich French ass landlords. We're gonna set links to these uh, stories. Yeah. In the description. Um, but yeah, that was, that was just some rich ass landlords uh, being assholes to him because they wanted his land, um, or just some rich lords in general. So yeah, that's um, that's like that's one of the old serial killer tales, isn't that right, Simon? Simon's two fist, like no. two fisted tales of adventure. They are. Uh, what? Who? I'm trying to. I had one. Forgot it. Simon's headbutting me violently. He's trying to kill me. You're trying to serial kill me, aren't you, buddy? You're deriving sick sexual pleasure from this. <laughs> yes, you are. Oh, sick sexual pleasure from headbutting me in the mm, leg. Yes. Mm. That, that makes it sound terrible. That does. Yeah. Um, That's reverse um, bestiality, and I do not appreciate it. <laughs> Isn't that what most dogs achieve? Yeah, Simon. You're you're a you're a trendsetter. Ooh yeah. Ooh, you hipster cat. Oh yeah. <laughs> no one can see what's happening over here. This is the best thing. All this, all this me filling in space. Oh yeah. Oh uh, yes. Was it? So what was it? What do you? What killer are you talking about? Um. Shoot. He. He. Uh. It was. Keep your biting, son. It wasn't. Uh. He's a cannibal now. Oh no. He tastes human flesh. I don't think that's what makes you a cannibal. I think cannibals eating your own species. Yes, I know it is. God, Liam. But Simon is a person, huh? Simon's been a person? Yeah, he's a wizard inside of a cat. He's a, he's level a druid? He's a level 15 wizard. I thought he was just a druid. No, his HP isn't high enough. Isn't that right, buddy? What in your HP if I were to sufficiently hit Simon, he would be he would turn back into his human form, but I'm not going to. Yeah, so he is a druid. Because I'm not abusive. Yeah, so he started beating his cat. So we'll call him a druid, even though you know he could be a wizard if he polymorphed himself, which would explain no, why he's not very smart. I don't smart. think he can self polymorph. This is very off topic. Yes, Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Yu-Gi-Oh cards are about serial killers. Yes. Yes, yes. Thousands of people die in that show um, because of children's card games. Yeah, it would have been. It, it would be a bit better if we were. Uh, if we on were topic both, still. Or no, if we were both. Uh, as knowledgeable on this serial killer Oh, thing. no, I just totally forgot one. It was, um... Unless it was BTK. No, it was an American one. I think something about my thought was that it was, uh... Kind of... Oh, American Sniper. Can't remember his name. <laughs> <laughs> my cat just punched me. <laughs> no! No! Do, no, he was. Do, do, he, do, do, do. I'm going to consider him a serial killer, completely. The American sniper? Yes. But he was a career. So, oh, so you're saying he took pleasure in murdering people? Yes, which he absolutely did. Oh yeah, he did. Um, he did say that he liked to uh, cripple people instead of killing them. He want like uh, like I guess he liked them bleeding out. And he did believe that it was his mission from God, and that God would forgive his sins. Yeah, so Which... he was a bit crazy. But that's the line between, like, crazy, religious, and psychotic, but I don't really find much of a distinction. No, no, they're pretty much the same thing. Yeah, I can't believe that that guy. Like, of course, he's supposedly an American hero, but man was a stone-cold murderer. No doubt he did a good job as a sniper, but he was in there for the wrong reasons. Mm -hmm. His reasons were specifically to go and kill some <laughs> What? What kind of term is that, Liam? Oh, it's it's racist as fuck. Like I don't even know if I'm a, if I'm allowed to say that, but I'm using no. it in the context of him being a racist. Are motherfucker. you quoting him? Yeah. Okay. Definitely. Um, yeah. Yes, yeah, that's a quote. Um, you can't sue us for that. Completely quoting. Mm-hmm. 
I'm, I'm going to bleep that out anyways. You guys will know by the context what I said, but just remember that I was saying it in the spirit of a racist motherfucker. And it was in a quote. Yeah, it was in a quote. Yeah. So yeah, it's mm -hmm. just like, it's just so stupid how, uh... That we let those people into the military because you know they'll do they'll do a good enough job of murdering people. Well, Canada well, doesn't need them. We have the Quebec. Well, those people are the best mil like craziest military people we can possibly find. I thought you were gonna say they were the most racist people. Oh, they're pretty. <laughs> they're they they can be racist. Oh, but anyways, yeah. The, no, you mean like the uh, the van the uh, the van right? The van dues. The van dues. Yeah, the van dues is what we call them in the Anglo sphere because we can't pronounce shit. Van ha 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 Le van Okay. But yeah, the van dues are like a pretty sick. Uh, but that's that's. They are great military. Uh, Brennan, it doesn't work when you talk to the cat. That's not something we're hallucinating. Um, <laughs> well, if he talks to you, that would be hallucination, because cats can't talk. He responds that right, back. He didn't get right, so Yo, he stuck to the cat. I know. I was, I was totally helping him there. <laughs> I was lifting him higher so that his claws would Lift come. Lift me higher. <laughs> yeah, well, I think we've thoroughly expressed our uh, abuse. What's the time? Place. Oh, we're we're coming near to the, we're coming near to the end. Oh, like we're almost an hour plus already. This um, let me just come and peek around. Ooh. Plus five. Plus five. Yeah, yeah, we can do that. Um. So yes. Um. I think we've expressed our views on serial killings. Uh, enough. Just these different case uh studies. What is Simon's this about to head the computer as is uh his job. Um, there we go. He's now going to look at... Oh, okay. he's probably rubbing the mic. Yeah, as to what is the question of a psychopath and what is a question... Like, as to what... That's the question of what is a psychopath and what is a psychotic person. What the differences are there. And some of the different uh, serial killer types that different serial killers fall into. I think it'd be just more advantageous if you just go up and... Go and look, uh, look up these stories... We I didn't recommend even... you hit up Boondi Joe and learn about the people. Yeah, and we didn't even Just talk about Ted Bundy dude, at all. Ted Bundy, oh, there's a YouTuber who I used to watch who was a relative of Ted Bundy. Interesting. Yeah. You know, the guy's got to have family somewhere. Um, but no, look up Moondi Joe to figure out that one of the people who was involved with that was named Batman, or Man Bat, I can't remember. Yeah, if it was in India, his name might have been Batman. Mm -hmm. Which is beautiful name. Um, I appreciate that. Whoever named their child Batman before those comics existed. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Catching oh, some yeah. murderers. Mm. Mm. So we might do a topic. Uh, we might do a topic session on mass murderers once you know. Fucking Brendan learns <sighs> more. I'm sorry. Murderers aren't my thing. First out the. Dundee? Crocodile Dundee? He was a famous murderer. Um, yes, yes, he haunted he killed the many of crocodiles. He haunted the Australian outback. Um, mm -hmm. Well known for um, going at outback steakhouses those in are, the United States. Yeah, those are American, and he's <laughs> haunting the. Oh, he's haunting those! He goes around the. Oh my God, that's we're, we're we're giving too many ideas. We now we can just imagine crocodile Dundee killer man oh, with no. very loud with very very loud fake Australian accent goes to Outback Steakhouse and attacks people with machete. No, mate, that's a machete. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we've just inspired one serial killer now. <laughs> This is a terrible thing we've done. <laughs> We're gonna hear this, and it's going to be like inspired by two bit radio podcast or two a two bit YouTube podcast that has like, let's see how many how many subscribers will we have uh, in the future? Five. Legitimate or not? We'll have five. Or no, no, no. We'll have two legitimate because our the the well the. I think we'll be five total subscribers because our subscriber count will just have like some of our subscribers will have just gone by that point. Probably. They'll, they'll Those realize two what people bullshit that listen is. to us. Yes, um, you two people. You know what? That's we're dating pretty this cool. episode, but you know. You know what? That's pretty cool that two people want to listen to us. Thanks, you two guys. And if it's not us, just go away. We're too cool for you. The hipster power and the cat, Unicron, whatever Liam is. 
yeah, so if you want to, um, if you want to hear more casts like this, comment below. Scrub scribe. Or just press that like button and you'll be listening to us with absolutely no ability for us to hear you back in the next Just scream cast. at your monitor and I will sense it. Mm-hmm. Post Please every... stop screaming at your monitor. It's please po my head. Please start posting first on the comments. First. God fucking damn it, <laughs> Brendan. <laughs>